Nigeria's Electoral Commission has expressed a fear that insecurity in parts of the country may lead to the cancellation or postponement of the forthcoming general elections. How can this be averted? Well, stay with us for a conversation with a security expert. With all eyes in Nigeria on the forthcoming general elections, an equally important national exercise, the population census comes up after the elections. We'll look at why Nigeria needs to have the national count at this time. And in of the press, we'll bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. All these ahead on The Breakfast. And we're back with the breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. We're reaching live from our studios right here in Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Kofi Bartels. Once again, you're welcome. We'll get into the conversations later, of course, as we earlier advertised. But let's uh, quickly um, take you through what has been trending as far as conversations online are concerned. Uh, some interesting ones today. Um, and of course, uh, a lot of Nigerians not wasting time taking the opportunity of access uh, to platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to share their views, and even the traditional media uh, to share their views on some of these issues that uh, you know have gotten the attention. The first one we'll look at is uh, from the Department of State Security Services, um, the DSS, which has been uh, in the news a lot recently. I mean, we know the DSS had um, made some statements regarding the fuel scarcity in the country, um, given some ultimatum to the surprise of uh, many, you know, some people asking what does the DSS have to do uh, with the security situation in the country? Well, um, that ultimatum, I don't know what happened to it because people are still queuing for petrol. Uh, it's still not available as it should be. Um, in some parts of the country, people are, are consumers are paying more than 400 now for a liter of petrol. So what happened? to the threat or the deadline or the ultimatum by the Department of State Security Services, I don't know. But another controversial um, activity or incident involving the DSS recently uh, was the, the attempt to arrest the governor of the Central Bank uh, of Nigeria, um, called in the Mayfield, the man affectionately, affectionately called Mephi uh, by some Nigerians. Well, what, what the latest is, is that um, the DSS has come out to <coughs> inform Nigerians or to allege that the po politicians are uh, waging war against the Director General of uh, the uh, Secret Police, you know, the Secret Service of Nigeria. That's what they're, they're claiming, that some politicians are waging war, that's what they said, against uh, the DG, or the DSS rather, that's what the DG is saying, that some politicians are waging war against the DSS. Um, uh, according to Yusuf Bichi, who is a DJ of the organization, uh, and uh, he said it says that uh, there's a smear campaign, or some politicians uh, are launching or have launched a smear campaign against the DG Yusuf Bichi and key officials uh, of the service. And the secret police is saying the smear campaign is due to the service's uh, uncompromising stance, what they call the uncompromising stance, uh, on some critical governance and policy issues, all right, some, some critical uh, policy and government issues. They're saying that because they're trying to do things straight, people are not happy, politicians, some politicians are not happy. They're trying to smear the name of the DG. Um, the, the service is also expressing this concern not more than 24 hours after, uh, or barely 24 hours after the uh, CUPP, which is a coalition of united political parties in Nigeria, announced that it had summoned an emergency meeting in Abuja, the nation's capital, to deliberate and reach a decision on the continued stay of the DSS DG in office in view of his recent activities, which they said allegedly, allegedly undermined uh, President Muhammad Buhari's promise of a free and fair uh, general election. So is what they're saying uh, they want to do. Now, if you recall, the uh, members of this opposition uh, parties under the CUPP banner released a statement uh, through its steering committee, Secretary High Chief Peter Ame. Uh, they also went on to express their worry over what they call the alleged 
repeated involvement of the DSS DG in activities which they said threatened uh, a, a hope for credible uh, elections. But Peter Funaya is a spokesperson for the DSS. Yesterday, he released a statement on behalf of the agency as expected, and uh, he said those behind the plot, as he's put it, to smear the, the reputation of the DSS, its DG and leading officials. He says they have engaged civil society organizations, they've engaged uh, non-governmental organizations, and they've also engaged um, others to stage rallies around you know, the, the country, uh, road shows and press conferences, all in a bid to discre discredit Yusuf Bichi, the DG of uh, the DSS. So, I mean, this is something that we, you know, we have to, we just give you the report uh, um, some Nigerians are really not in favor of the DSS. They're not really that popular, um, of course, as a security agency with some of the things that have happened in the past. If you monitor the comments online, uh, most people are not taking the words of the DSS, you know, saying it's a smear campaign against the DG. Um, one of the, the controversial issue, issues also involving the agency was a, a news report uh, that said the DSS DG's wife uh, stopped a governorship candidate in Kano State from boarding a plane. Um, we're told there was mild drama at the Malama Minu Kano International Airport in Kano State. Uh, the wife of the DG uh, is uh, Aisha Bichi. This is a report. I'll just go over to Daily Trust because they put up a story about this and I'll read what they said. They talked about mild drama at the uh, that aforementioned airport. And they said that uh, the woman uh, reportedly prevented uh, the state governorship candidate of the new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, from boarding a flight. And we're told that trouble started after the motorcade of use of allegedly uh, delayed Mrs. Bichi's convoy from gaining access to the VIP lounge uh, of the airport. So this is one of the controversial issues regarding or surrounding the DSS in recent time. This is the latest one. Um, where, where do you stand? What do you think about this? Uh, do you believe that uh, there's a smear campaign against uh, the DG and top officials of the agency? Um, they're saying, see, we're not compromising. We are sticking a stand, a strong stance on issues of critical governance and security uh, um, concern. And because we are being strong in this regard, some politicians are not happy, you know. Um, the CUPP particularly talked about activities or actions by the DSS that may threaten uh, the elections. I don't know if you followed the, um, the actions of the DSS activities or DSS in recent time. And if you think that there's uh, what they've done in particular, or they've undertaken some actions in recent time in particular that will um, compromise the elections. I don't know if you think uh, there's something like that going on. But this governorship candidate in, in Kano State of course, is a politician, is a, is a candidate, the elections are around the corner. Should we interpret or interpret what happened between Mrs. Bichi and the candidate as a, an official action of the agency, of an official policy of the agency, or maybe something that is a distraction, something that probably is not uh, a policy of the agency, um, something that just happened to have happened and uh, should be looked into and not read too much into it. I don't know where you stand on this, but we'll leave it at that and we'll move on to the next uh, uh, top trending segment. This is a story. This is a really sad one. Uh, uh, social media was awash with, um, uh, with news, not just news, but also fond words, kind words, uh, expression of sadness, and um, you know, just especially kind words re regarding the life and times of um, Peace Ayamo Sigwe. It's a legendary, legendary uh, Nigerian entertainer, uh, movie producer. She is uh, the founder of the AMAA Awards. That's the Africa Movie Academy Awards, or AMA, as it's called. And uh, she died, reportedly, at the St. Nicholas Hospital in Lagos. I'm not sure which of the St. Nicholas is this is, because we have a number of them. But that's not the issue. Um, she is said to have been in coma uh, since Saturday. Um, from the reports we have, her colleagues were the ones who put out the information, according to a particular report, Zig Zulu, who is a movie maker, a movie producer, on a platform uh, shared by these movie actors, we call them Nollywood in Nigeria, 
uh, he put up a statement saying, um, quote, our president peace has passed. As of Saturday, she was reported to be in a coma at St. Nicholas, uh, but now her family has confirmed the transition with the memory of her life be a blessing. Rest in peace, dear peace, he shared on that platform. That's how the news uh, spread. All right, some colleagues and close friends of uh, the woman when, who went to see her at hospital could not believe that she had passed on, you know, that uh, they said she was just in the ICU, you know, she was just in ICU and I couldn't believe that she had died. Um, it's really sad. Some of the movie producers, uh, co-movie producers have gone, taken to the social media platforms to also, um, you know, uh, remember her, express their sadness and, you know, console the family. One is Obi Emeloye, uh, also went on his social media page uh, to confirm the passing of peace, I am Osigwe. Um, and of course, the information was put out that the family has not made an official statement, you know, so uh, that's what we're told. It's very, very sad. She remembered for many things, uh, especially her moves in the movie industry, especially with the African Movie Academy Awards, a big event uh, which holds every single year. Uh, she has movies, very, very notable movies, under her belt. So let's look at some of the things that uh, she achieved. She was also uh, the president of the Association of Movie Producers uh, and one of the most prominent figures in the Nigerian movie industry known as Norwood. She will be missed, um, apart from being the founder of the African Movie Academy uh, Award, she was known because of her passion and dedication for the Nigerian film and entertainment uh, industry really sad. She was born into the notable family of Osigwe, I am Osigwe, in Nkwere, uh, in Imo State, that's in the southeastern part uh, of Nigeria. She had a degree in law and political science from Oxford Brookes University in England. Uh, she published magazines, uh, a magazine, a particular magazine called Clicks. Um, it was specifically targeted at the black population. Uh, in England. So she was doing things over there. She shot her first music video for hip hop twin singers P Square. Yes, indeed. She shot her first music video for P Square. And she also managed P Square uh, for some time. Indeed, um, it's, it's really sad. Now, the African movie, African Film Academy, rather, which she uh, established, uh, it's a body, or she founded a body that governs the film. A ceremony. It's been on since 2005, and um, because of her, her achievements in the movie industry, um, in film and entertainment, she was given a national award of um, Member of the Order of the Federal Republic (MFR) in 2012, an honor bestowed on her by the federal government of Nigeria for her contribution to the film industry. Um, really sad. In 2015, she started. The Africa One initiative to commemorate Africans in the entertainment uh, industry. Uh, among awards that uh, Peace Ayamo Sigwe has received in 2019, she was honored with the African Film Pioneer Award at the African Film Festival TAF, um, one of the popular festivals uh, for movies in Africa or for film. Uh, she also, like we said, is the national president of uh, Association of Movie Producers. She's been the president since 2000 and 20. Um, a lot of movies under her belt. Um, I'm sure that as time goes on, we will have the opportunity to look at some of these movies and also to remember her as she should uh, be remembered. We'll say, may the soul of peace, I am Osigwe, rest in peace. You know, I remember seeing her moving all over the place, you know, while the, in the early years of uh, the African Movie Academy Awards, very energetic, you know, very full of life. Um, she's a mover and a shaker. Uh, she, she was just so energetic, a, a, an ideas person, really. And to have midwife such an award, you know, to get to the stage she got with partnerships. I mean, she had partnerships with global organizations and in you know, multinational you know, institutions. I think uh, she did so well. She did so well. And uh, she will be missed. Um, she's left her, her mark an indelible one of that on the sounds of time. So um, we will say uh, a consolation to family and friends uh, of peace. I am Osigwe so rest in peace.
All right, uh, let's move on to the last one. The, the um, leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra uh, group, uh, Mazi Namdikanu, has been in custody uh, for some time now, and that is not news. But what is news is that um, his lawyer, or one of his lawyers, uh, has said that uh, he is experiencing a deteriorating health. Um, according to Ifa Ejofo, all right, who is a member of the Kanu legal team, he uh, said that uh, you know, when they paid the leader of the group, his routine visit, the man was not in good health. Ifa Ejofo has been active on Twitter, so if you check him out, you see his Twitter account and you'd see long a long statement he shared on uh, that micro blogging platform uh, Twitter. Ejofo said Kanu has been uh, suffering uh, from heart problems and some mineral deficiencies which require specialist attention. Uh, he alleges that it, the man who is in DSS custody uh, has been refused access to his private doctors uh, for the management of his health condition. That is what um, HFO said. He visited Kano on Monday uh, at the DSS detention facility in Abuja. Um, and of course, this is a routine visit that they have from time to time. Uh, he says that his client, Mazin Namdikano, needs immediate attention without further delay. One of the things he also said uh, is that um, the lawyers tried to give uh, or offered the Department of State Services one million naira um, to be able to get uh, Mazin Kano's um, drugs. In fact, Ijefo said that um, Chief Michael Zekome, who is Kano's lead counsel, offered the DSS one million naira um, so that his medical needs could be attended to, but the DSS rejected that one million naira, saying they had all the resources they needed to have to be able to, you know, get him his medical needs. So they rejected that money. Um, according to Ifa Ejofo, he says Kanu needs medication for his heart and his chest burns, and that for the past nine days, the DSS has refused to give him uh, the prescribed medication for his heart and chest burns for the past nine days. Okay, that's what he said. And so that one millionaire was meant to help the secret police buy the drugs if they could not get them, but they rejected it, saying they have the financial capacity uh, to provide the drugs. He also said that um, Mazakano needs to be released and he needs to be set free because detaining him uh, means that he his life is in danger. All right, and uh, also he says that. Um, uh, why has the DSS failed to give him the needed medical attention um, while still detaining him despite a court injunction that has freed him? So he also used the opportunity to remind everybody that there is a court ruling that has set the man free and he should be released as quickly uh, as possible. Well, of course, uh, for me, uh, uh, I don't think I, uh, uh, anyone should can blame the DSS for not collecting or accepting the one million naira because, you know, <laughs> How will it sound if, if, if an agency of government is collecting money or taking monies from the lawyers of somebody who is standing trial to attend to the person? It doesn't speak well of the government. So I think, you know, not collecting that money or rejecting that one millionaire uh, is the best, is a good thing, the right thing for the DSS to have done. Um, the, the picture, all right, that we will have seen and the analysis and the reaction of being, oh, they're now making money off. Kind of, you know, it's not good. But, of course, the man needs to be given his medication as quickly as possible. There's no reason why he should be in detention for nine days and shouldn't be given medical attention. It's the right of any, any prisoner. He's not a prisoner. <laughs> he's still, you know, he's been released by the courts. But he's someone undergoing trial, all right, and he had a case in court and they took him in, they detained him. He was not sentenced to prison, any prison, okay? So... Even prisoners who have been sentenced, found guilty, they deserve to be treated right. They have rights, okay? A prisoner has rights. It's not like saying, oh, because you're found guilty of murder or, or corruption or stealing or something, and you're sent to prison, they should leave you there to die. No. A prisoner has rights, and that's why you have health facilities, you have clinics, you have doctors in all the prisons in the country. If you don't have a medical facility there, there's somewhere they can take them to to be attended to. They don't just take them there to die, you know. And then it's expected that the DSS will be even better than the correctional facilities, you know what I mean? Because um, <laughs> uh, it's well documented, the, 
the woes that travails the state of the correctional facilities, detention centers, or the prisons, rather, in the country as we speak. Most of them are overcrowded. But if it's a DSS detention facility, um, we don't know about that. We don't know if it's legal for DSS to detain anyone, but the courts had okayed it before, so probably it's legal. Um, it's expected that they even have better treatment there, you know, because uh, DSS is a bit uh, more loaded, if you want to call it that. So, and this is a high-profile case. This is a high-profile uh, um, uh, detainee. And they need to do everything possible to make sure that such news and information doesn't come out to the public. We don't hear things like this. Not that it doesn't come out to the public, but that this does not happen. All right. Especially in the case of this man who's a high-profile um, uh, um, detainee. And you know the volatile nature of things in the Southeast. We don't want anything to happen to Mazin and Ricano. Because if anything happens to him, who knows what is going to happen to the security situation in the country. All right. It is of utmost importance. Security-wise, let's start from there, since we're talking about the Department of State security. It is of utmost importance that Mazi and Kano be kept healthy. It's very important. If anything happens to him, I mean, it, we might see chaos in the southeast. You might see unrest going to, you know, levels never seen before. How his supporters, how his kith and kin, how his people react. So why would you deny him his drugs for nine days? doesn't make sense. So DSS has to do everything possible to make sure that such a high-profile detainee who has been released by the courts, as uh, Ifan Ejafo said, should be kept healthy, should be given everything he needs. Don't forget, the trial judge had already said that Kanda should be given, afforded all the comfort that the DSS can give him. This includes his medication. Please do the needful. All right. We'll leave it at that. Um, thank you very much for your time. When we come back, we'll look at what the papers are saying uh, this morning right here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.